Today we're going to solve and graph for compound inequalities. Now the first compound inequality is an OR compound inequality. That means two systems are both good and they're marked with a U for union. That means everything that you graph is true. So we have 2x minus 5 is greater than 3 or 4 minus x is greater than or equal to 6. Now in the English language or usually means you get one or the other. In math it means you're going to get both. In other words both of these are true so that when we graph them we're going to have both graphs. But before we graph them let's solve for them. In that first equation we're going to bring 5 to the other side and then we're going to bring all that down. Divide 2x by 2 and of course do the same for 8 and that isolates that x and x is greater than 4. Now in the second equation we need to move 4 over. Bring all that down. Multiply both sides by negative 1 and when I say multiply both sides by negative 1 I'm not going to put that negative 1 on both sides like I used to. I am simply going to change the sign of the x and the 2. So negative x is going to be positive x and positive 2 is going to be negative 2. So that looks good don't you think? No I don't think so. Remember when we multiply by negative 1 what we're supposed to do? That's right when you multiply by negative 1 the inequality sign has to move in the other direction. So x was greater than, now x is less than, actually less than or equal to. And so do we forget anything else? Yeah, bring that or down because that is part of the equation. And so let's graph that. And while that might seem confusing, let's just graph these individually. We know how to graph x is greater than 4. Yeah, I know last time we graphed that on the line, but with compound inequalities we're going to come up with some problems, not here because both of these are going to be true, but we're going to come up with some problems later that we like to kind of graph it above the graph and then when we're all done we're going to bring it down. So let's just work with that for now. Greater than means it's not 4, so put a circle there and go out to infinity in the same direction as our inequality arrow. And let's see, x is less than or equal to negative 2. I said less than or equal to, so we put a dot instead of the circle. Less than or equal to, and look which way the arrow is going here. Okay, so it's going to go that way out into infinity. And since those lines don't interfere with each other, let's just bring them down onto the graph. And that is our solution and that is what the graph will look like. Now I said there could be some interference. Let's look at two ways this could have gone. Okay, for this example, why don't we keep the same first equation, x is greater than 4, and we'll graph it just like that, just like we did before. But for x is less than negative 2, x is less than or equal to negative 2, why don't we have the arrow go in the other direction, x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and we're going to come out with this. And you see now we have overlap starting right here. Do you see both those lines overlap and go this way to infinity? So for this problem, we don't even need that line. We uh, will just get rid of that line and this line will cover everything because this line covers the overlap and it covers the new territory, it covers everything. So we don't need to draw both lines. But let me give you another example. Okay, here I kept the change that x is greater than or equal to negative 2 going out in this direction. And now I'm going to change the x is greater than 4 and I'm going to say that x is less than 4. Okay, so we'd have the same dot and it got to infinity in the other direction. And so here's our overlap. 
But as you can see, it doesn't matter because from any point in here, any point in here on the overlap, we're going out into infinity that direction or we're going out into infinity in that direction. So the graph is the entire graph. So mar mark a line just uh, over that entire area and have arrows going out into both directions. And the answer is every possible answer into infinity in both directions. But let's look at an AND problem. The second type of compound inequality is an AND inequality. AND is where two systems both must be true at the same time and it's marked with an upside down U for intersection. You see that first U meant union, so U for union, and the upside down U is just the opposite, which would mean the intersection. So only the overlap is true. 2X plus eight is greater than or equal to 5X minus seven, and 5x minus 3 is greater than 3x plus 1. Now let's work on the first equation. I'm moving our x values to the right hand side of the equation even though ultimately they'll have to be on the left hand side of the equation because I want to keep them positive. Now you can keep it on the left hand side and end up with a negative value and then multiply it by negative 1 like we did before. That's fine. That's the way most people do it. I like to keep my x's positive, so now you know both ways to do it. Let's bring all that down. Bring the negative seven to the other side. Bring all that down. Divide both sides by three. And that will isolate our x, and 15 over three is five. But our x is on the wrong side of the equation, so let's flip that. And we flipped our inequality sign and x is less than or equal to 5. And notice that when we flipped our x, we flipped our inequality sign. But the most important thing to know is that in this first equation, the arrow is pointing to the x. In the second equation, the arrow is pointing to the x. So just make sure that as you move your x around, as you move your variable around, that that arrow is following it. If you move it from the right hand side to the left hand side and the arrow is pointing toward the x on the right hand side, make sure it's pointing to the x on the left hand side. If it's pointing away from the x, make sure it's pointing away from the x when you flip it. Now let's work on the next equation. That's right, we'll bring our x's over to the left hand side and our x's are going to end up being positive. Let's bring all that down and bring all of our units over to the right hand side. Bring all that down. Divide both sides by 2 and that will isolate our x and 4 over 2 is 2. And don't forget to bring the and down to right there. Good. And let's graph that. Good. x is less than or equal to 5. And we put a dot right there and our line goes off into infinity in the negative direction following the inequality arrow. And x is greater than 2. It is greater than. It is not 2. So we're going to put a circle right at the 2. And we're going to go off into a positive direction to infinity. And the AND means both have to be true. AND both of those are true. So is this graph true for both? No, it's only true for this one right here. Then it starts being true. There's overlap here. Now is this true? No, this is only true for one. It has to be true for both. So we are going to just graph the overlap. Watch this. So just this little segment between 2 and 5 with a circle on the 2, of course, and a dot on the 5. 
That is the overlap and that is the graph for this equation. Now look at, let's look at some other possibilities that we could have had for the AND situation. So if they both had a less than sign or they both had a greater than sign, there'd be a little bit more overlap. And we would start right here. This is overlap territory going all the way out here. And then everything on this side of the O is not uh, overlap. So we're gonna start with a circle because that circle begins the overlap and we're gonna go out into infinity. So essentially we're just gonna take, if they're both going off into the same direction, that is less than or greater than, then you start with the, uh, the shortest graph and that's really gonna become your overlap and that would be the answer to that. Now, what if they're going off in uh, two different directions, but there is no overlap? So maybe you can see I've taken our first two equations and reversed the signs. And now I have a situation where there is no overlap. Right here, there should be an overlap and there isn't. And so our answer is, since there is no overlap, the answer, remember, is our overlap, is empty set or no solution. So let's try something else. This is another AND problem. And this is normally what an AND problem looks like. And you'll know it's an AND problem because it has two inequalities in it. That is, they've thrown both AND equations into one equation. And we have negative six is less than or equal to negative four X plus two is less than two. And so let's, the X's, is, the X's are in the middle. So let's remove the units out of the middle. Okay, that will remove our units from the middle, but whatever we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side. Now, which side are we talking about? Well, we're talking about both sides because the middle pertains to both sides of this equation. So we're gonna subtract two from both sides of the equation. That is to say, all three sides of that equation. So let's bring all that down. Okay, that doesn't look too bad, but let's isolate the x by dividing everything by four. That is all three sides by four and not negative four. Let's leave that negative sign alone for right now. Okay, that's gonna give us a negative x in the middle, a negative two on the left, and zero over four is zero. And to make that X positive, we're gonna to have to multiply everything, all three sides by negative one. So let's change the signs on all of that. And of course, let's flip those inequality signs. And that is a correct solution, except that they like the zero on the left-hand side. That is to say they like the lowest number, the number of least value on the left-hand side. So let's flip this whole thing. So we have a lot of things going on here, except in respect to X. X is just brought down, but everything else has been flipped. And so we brought the zero from the right-hand side to the left-hand side and did the same thing with the two. It went from the left-hand side to the right-hand side and we flipped our inequality signs, but be careful. Let's look at this. X is greater than zero. Look down here. X is greater than zero. Now I know we're reading it in the wrong direction. You can say zero is less than X, but the point is up here, the arrow is pointing away from X. Down here, it's still pointing away from X to zero. Now toward 
V2, it is pointing toward the X. So the greater, or, greater than or equal sign is pointing toward the X. It still is here too. And remember, we have the greater than or equal sign in respect to X and two. Don't bring this down here. So let's graph that. And it's really difficult to graph this, in my opinion. It's difficult to graph this unless your X is on the left-hand side. So let's keep this X here and we're going to ignore the zero for right now and we're going to just graph x is less than or equal to 2. So we're right at 2 with a dot, not a circle. It's uh, x is less than or equal to 2 and we're going to follow the arrow in that direction off into infinity. And now for the zero, let's, uh, let's go back up into this equation. And maybe we can ignore all of that. And x is greater than zero. And it'll look like that. And we could also go to our final equation and read it backwards x is greater than zero instead of zero is less than x. It's very hard to think that way. I know it is hard for me and all of the students I've ever taught have difficult thinking that way. Zero is less than x because it's, it's almost like they're asking us to think in a mirror. So anyways, it's not too bad reading it backwards starting with x. x is greater than zero or you can go to the previous equation and see that, I mean, this equation is correct. X is greater than zero. So that's the way we grafted it. And let's see, the overlap starts at zero. Okay, it does not include zero. It starts at zero and ends at two. And that's the solution. I know it's really hard to see. Maybe I should have done that in blue ink or something like that. But that is the solution. That's the way it works. And you need to do your homework.